Hi, and good evening. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and happy 4th of July to you. Uh, during this amazing holiday, give thanks and remember the people who uh, passed away and gave that right to us. So, in closing, God bless America, and happy 4th of July. States of America. Please rise for the invocation given by Captain Guy M. Lee, Chaplain, United States Navy. Across vast deserts, a great sea, and an immense ocean. But on this Independence Day in Afghanistan, our great country and all that it stands for is at the very forefront of our thoughts and prayers. In this coming year, give us the grace to be and to do the things that you have intended for us. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. We ask your blessings on us, our families, and our homeland. Amen. And during the summer of 1813, Major George Armistead served as that stronghold's commander. Major Armistead was ready to defend the fort, but he wanted a flag that would identify his position, making it visible to the enemy from a distance. 400 yards of best quality wool bunting. They cut 15 stars that measure two feet from point to point and eight red and seven white stripes, each two feet wide. They laid the material on the Malthouse floor where it was sewn together. By August it was finished. He spotted the huge flag waving above Fort McHenry. Thrilled by the sight of the flag and the knowledge that the fort had not fallen, Key took a letter from his pocket and began to write some verses on the back of it. Later after his release and the withdrawal of the British fleet, Key checked into a Baltimore hotel and completed his poem about the defense of Fort McHenry. The Star Spangled Banner was first recognized for official use by the Navy in 1889 and by the President in 1916. It was adopted as the National Anthem of the United States of America by Congressional Resolution on March 3, 1931. The Star Spangled Banner, our National Anthem, has four verses. The first three verses recount what Francis Scott Key observed in the naval bombardment of Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. O thus be it ever, when freemen shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven rescue land, praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. Then conquer we must, with our cause it is just, and thus be our motto, in God is our trust and the star-spangled banner and triumph shall wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave.
paid the price by Paul Harvey for July 1974. Americans, you know the 56 men who signed our Declaration of Independence that first 4 of July. You know they were risking everything, don't you? Because if they won their war with the British, there'd be years of hardship in a struggling nation. If they lost, they'd face a hangman's noose. And yet, there where it says, we herewith pledge our lives, our fortunes, and your safety. Thomas McKean of Delaware was so harassed by the enemy that he was forced to move his family five times in five months. He served in Congress without pay, his family in poverty and in hiding, who lived up to the pledge. Of the 56 signers of the Declaration, few were long to survive. Two of them lost their sons in the Army. One had two sons captured. Nine of the 56 died in the war from its hardships or from its more merciful bullets. The Declaration of Independence setting 13 colonies on a journey to freedom as a sovereign nation. And this document was founded on a set of ideals and principles based simply on liberty and justice, and that government was not the domain of a single individual, but rather a body of... Stand on a different battlefield, shoulder to shoulder with our Afghan partners as a coalition committed to seeing that the people of Afghanistan have the same opportunity to have a voice in their government and the same opportunity to determine their own future. That same spirit that drove our founding fathers is alive and well today, and it's embodied right here in the courage and the commitment of every soldier of every nation that comprises R.C. Southwest. Reality. And while this is a celebration of the American Independence Day, it's also a reminder that freedom is the right of all men and women of every nation. And our job here is not yet done. The burden of protecting freedom now rests upon our shoulders. It is only through the sacrifices that each of you make every day that will ensure the future of liberty and justice for all. And I will tell you from the bottom of my heart, I'm proud to serve beside each and every one of you. Thank you. In the fall of 1938, as war was threatening Europe, Irving Bert Lennon decided to write a peace song. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with My home sweet home